sketch a graph of the function f of x equals x squared minus 1 over x squared plus 7x plus 10. First, let's take a look at the vertical and horizontal asymptotes. The vertical asymptotes, the vertical asymptotes are when the denominator equals 0. We cannot let that denominator equal 0 because when the denominator equals 0, the function is undefined. So I'll just set up this equation and we're going to have to factor this. x squared plus 7x plus 10 equals 0 is factored as x plus 2 times the quantity x plus 5 equals 0. Solving this, you have x plus 2 equals 0 or x plus 5 equals 0. I'll show that. And then we get x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 5. So our vertical asymptotes, lines that the graph cannot cross, are right at x equals negative 2 and at x equals negative 5. The, the horizontal asymptotes are, are something, those are a little bit different. Uh, it can cross, the graph can cross the horizontal asymptotes, or asymptote, but in the end, the graph will look like, like this line. So if we have any horizontal asymptotes. The horizontal asymptotes are the, this, uh, we can think of it as end behavior. What happens at the end? If we plugged in a very large number in for x, or that is, you can think of the math way of writing this, f of x um, as x goes to infinity, or, or x grows without bound, or goes to negative infinity. Well, here we have uh, our leading terms in the numerator and denominator. We see that the degrees are the same. We have a degree of 2. I don't want to write all over this thing too much, but a degree of 2. So what happens is, if you plug in a very large number, you get infinity divided by infinity uh, multiplied by these leading coefficients. And in this case, we have just coefficients of 1. So our horizontal asymptote is just the ratio of those leading coefficients. And in this case, it's just 1. So we have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 1. Now, again, this horizontal asymptote, the graph may cross this, but in the end, it will look very much like this. It'll, it'll follow this line, either from above or from below. Okay, we've got uh, vertical asymptote, horizontal asymptote. Let's take a look at um, y-intercept. Y-intercept. The y-intercept happens when x equals 0. That is, what is the value of y when we set x equal to 0? So you just plug in 0, and that is uh, 0 minus 1 over 0 plus 0 plus 10. And that equals negative 1 tenth. So that's our y-intercept, is negative 1 tenth. I'm going to put this in, in orange because this is part of the graph the negative one-tenth. I'm exaggerating the point here because this is just a point on the line, but I just want to remind ourselves that the graph will go through that point. Now we look for x-intercepts. x-intercepts are when um, the function equals zero. So x-intercepts when f of x equals zero. So that is when x squared minus 1 equals 0. Note that I didn't uh, pay attention to the denominator there, because no matter what the denominator is, as long as the numerator is 0, that's the only way you're going to get the function to be equal to 0. So we're only looking at the numerator to find out when the function equals 0. So solving this, uh, we already had to factor before, so let's just uh, add 1 to each side and say 1 equals x squared. Take the square root and say plus or minus 1 
equals x. Okay, so that is, uh, those are our x-intercepts, plus or minus 1, right here. Again, I'm going to put this in orange, and ultimately, we'll draw this graph in orange. Okay, let's start graphing here. Well, you could start testing some points. So what happens if uh, x is, when x is negative 6? Does it, does it come in? Is it above this, this vertical asymptote or, or below it when x is negative 6? Well, when x is negative 6, it's going to be a above, above 1. So it's going to go up like this. Okay. And when x is, let's test another one, when x is in between these vertical asymptotes. Let's say when x is negative 4. Well, when x is negative 4, we're going to see this thing uh, stay negative. So it's going to be down here. We know it's not going to cross that, that, uh, that x-axis. And it's not going to cross these, these x uh, I'm sorry, these vertical asymptotes either. Now this one, we kind of have a clue. It, it could come, come up like this and then go through these things, but let's see. Let's see what happens. When x, we know what happens when x is 1, or negative 1. What about when x is negative 3 halves? Is it above the, the x-axis or below it? Well, when x is negative 3 halves, we get a value above above the x-axis. So it's going to come down like this. It's going to cross this, this uh, x-axis at negative 1. It's going to cross the y-axis at negative 1 over 10. Come back up and cross the x-axis at positive 1. And we do know it's going to stay up ultimately because it doesn't cross the x-axis anymore. And we know we have that horizontal asymptote. So this in orange is ultimately a rough sketch of what this function will look like.